Hey everybody, and welcome back to Ready, Steady, Play. Hey! Michael and I are here to do some Hellboy stuff. Ooh! So uh, someone at some point asked Hell. us to do Hellboy, and they were like, Did you back Hellboy? Did you get Hellboy? Are you going to play Hellboy? And I was like... And I'm like, what's Hellboy? Yeah. Michael's like, what's Hellboy? <laughs> I didn't back Hellboy. I Hellboy is sort of a, a an intellectual property... I really like the concepts of, and my exposure, which was the two Guillermo del Toro films. Oh, from the early noughties. Yes, I really liked those two films, probably more than they deserved, because I like the, the sort of ideas of the story a lot, you know, like the, is that the, the dude? Fanta sort of contemporary fantasy, heaven and hell stuff, I like all of that. Yeah, but isn't it more like, not your traditional superhero thing? I would not associate Hellboy with as being a superhero at all. Yeah. Um, he, it's more like, uh, it's more kind of like, um, it's more kind of like modern fantasy. You yeah. Know, like sort of, but uh, it's it's like Constantine or something, you know? I mean, it comes from the comic book universe, but it's not necessarily a superhero yeah. sort of in the conventional yeah. sense. Yeah. But um, anyway, I don't like it enough or know the IP well enough to invest a hundred pounds in a Mantic game. So uh, what wow, I... Wow, that's a hundred pounds. I suppose ish. there's so much miniatures, isn't there? Well, this is the Kickstarter edition we've got here. Because what happened was uh, some people asked us if we're going to play it and if we're going to do it. So I reached out to Mantic and I said, Hello. Some fans <laughs> would like to see this on our channel. Will you send me a copy? And they were like, sure. So credit to Mantic. Thank you um, I promised them nothing and they've sent me um, a review copy. For today, what we're going to do, Michael and I are going to set up a custom short scenario. And then we're going to play through it. And I'm going to sort of teach Michael some of the rules as we go. Sounds good. So, Michael is Hellboy, and I'm Liz Sherman, and the game comes, if you've got the Kickstarter edition, you get the core set, plus like two expansions, and tons, and eight cases. And the way the game works is that you have these case files that sort of unfold as you go through them. They're essentially the scenarios you play. So they don't form like an ongoing campaign or anything like that. It's just these these singular adventures. Do they follow on from each other? Is there like a theme? Is it like a story? I honestly couldn't say. I've played the first three, and they didn't seem to follow on from one another at all. Okay. Nor did I, as someone who knows basically nothing about the actual sort of details of the Hellboy universe. I don't even remember the films that well. Yeah. There was a girl who has fire. There's a fish guy who's uh, now in Star Trek. There's a guy without horns. <laughs> I haven't seen the new one. I haven't seen the new one. But uh, this, anyway, so what we thought we'd do is, because the BPRD archives is one of the expansions that comes with the Kickstarter edition that... Mantic very kindly sent to me. Um, the, it's an expansion that lets you randomly generate cases. So I have played the first three structured cases, mm -hmm. and I've played um, a round of the random case generation, and so we're going to do that now. Wait. And what we're going to do is we're just going to generate a short, low-difficulty case. And uh, there's three lengths, short, medium, and long, and there are three difficulties, low, medium, and high. In addition to that, there are some other ways to adjust the difficulty via the, the Doom deck. This is a Doom deck, and you'll be drawing Doom cards every round for find out what bad stuff happens. Mm -hmm. These are all kind of like special Doom cards on the end here that have different effects depending on the scenario you're playing. But the majority of the Doom deck is made up with these by these cards with this magnifying glass. And uh, if you've got the Kickstarter edition, you've got these ones, which are like the standard That's ones. A frog. It is a frog. Um, so this is the standard symbol. And then the one with the A is the advanced deck. So you'd sub that in if you wanted a more advanced game. And the one with the E is the easy deck. So you'd sub that in if you wanted an easier game. Always oh. love an E. Uh, I got a minute. Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> Obviously, you meant empanada. I, I meant easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, that sounds worse. <laughs> Michael does love it when it's easy. We'll play short game, low difficulty, standard Doom deck. And that should give you guys a pretty good idea of how the game works as we play our way through it. But the game is, is essentially two sections. The investigation section, where you're trying to amass insight tokens that will help you in the second section which is the confrontation section and you will always reach the confrontation which is kind of like fighting a final boss it's just that the manner in which you do it will determine how easy it is for you there's a sort of optimal situation where you've kind of discovered the final confrontation through investigation and then you'll enter it without hazard then uh, there's the the doom track here which will fill up as you investigate and if it reaches a certain point that will trigger the final confrontation in a bad way and then if everybody gets knocked out at the same time that will trigger the final confrontation in an almost unwinnable situation so that's definitely won the first one 
as, yeah. as your preference. I would argue, um, without uh, spoiling too much, um, that if you are all knocked out and trigger the confrontation that way, it's almost not worth setting it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't bother. It's like, you lose. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, it's usually quite a bit of admin, but uh, we'll talk about that later. For now, let's build our deck. So here we've got the environment cards. So we've got three short cards here, which are going to give us three different short maps. So I'll just pick one of these at random. Um, three, buddy. Okay, there we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that under this card as we build. So we don't get any spoilers. Right, now we're going to get investigation. So there is a... This is the challenge rating, so I'm just going to pick low. Go. Cool. And now we've got uh, threat. This is going to determine what we're fighting. Beasts, witches, whatever. There is an abnormal threat card in here that we're not going to use because it's much too difficult. So, so. Um, I'll put these under... Oh, and I'm supposed to do this without looking at the cards. I'm messing this up. <laughs> mm -hmm. There we go. So that's done. It always looks, no matter how hard I try, it always looks super dodgy when I'm doing anything under the table with cards. And on the show. <laughs> Cannot be helped. Nope. So this is our mission objective. Again, it's a uh, one to three. <laughs> Number two. All right. And now we've got our twists. There's a whole bunch of twists. We're only going to use See, one twist. there's a twist. lot of options here. There's a lot of options about what might happen, yes. Uh, stop. Okay, so then I'll just take the top one, and hopefully this will be a nice easy twist. I've discovered with the twists in my limited experience that some of them are considerably easier than others. Yeah. Praying for the easy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now I need to just double check the number on the, the A card in this deck. So if we just flip over, we've got... It's number one. Number one. I can't remember which objective that is. But here we go. So now I pick the showdown card number one to match it and then this is going to determine the final boss of this particular Ooh, the mission. baddie yeah the baddie exactly okay. three two one stop all right and there we have successfully constructed our case file good team with that buddy <laughs> excellent so the case file goes over here on the hq board like that and we can remove the top card and there we are, ready to begin. Hashtag winning at setting up. <laughs> well, no, now that we've built the case file, we can actually begin to set up the game. Oh. <laughs> so Michael and I have, uh, we've, we've picked um, Liz and Hellboy for this mission. Yep. But uh, because we have no idea what's in there, and we can't know because that's the nature of a randomly generated scenario, these might be great characters for this, and they might be terrible characters for this. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. So <laughs> we reveal our map, which is this one here. So what Michael and I are going to do is set this map up, and uh, we'll be back in a minute once that's done. Be right back. This is your lift music. <laughs> is this an actual song? I don't know. It's, <laughs> you just, just, it's just coming off the top of my head here. Do you know what I've got in my head now that you've done all this lift music? No. Sonic. Well, how does that go? Uh, all right, well, now we're ready to begin. There, the setup is done. I don't know how much of that I fast-forwarded and how much I left in, but everything's set up. We're ready to begin the case, so we're going to requisition some items. Now, I think you should have this ancient blade. Show it to the people at home. Uh, requisition card, ancient blade. So this is a melee, melee weapon, and it's uh, fight tests using this weapon game. One upgrade. Yo. Um, is there anything on the back? No. How many of these do we get? One each? Nope, we get to spend seven. So I'm going to uh, give you that yes. as well. So I've got here the iron shoes. Um, I take it the cost is in their box to the... Uh, yeah, the cost, cost is one. that... Yeah, that costs one. And this is spend an action to move up to two areas and then, and then make a fight action against each enemy in the area you have moved into. Which is awesome. Yeah. Um... Because you can move and fight, and yeah. then fight and everybody. Then you discard that card. So it's like a one-off sort of massive brawl. So you want to save it for when there's a sort of an area with lots of minions in it. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to give you these field dressings. 
Ooh. Check me out. I might need these. So this is um, spend an action to heal up to a total of two damage from your agent and or another agent in your area. Oh, so that can be both of us. If yeah, you're in the same so you, area. yeah, so that lets you heal two on both of us and then the, you reverse it and you can heal one more on one of us um, when you oh, use cool. it again. Um, and then it's spent. Yep. And I'm going to take the submachine gun, which um, allows me to, when I make a ranged attack, pick two targets instead of one, so I can hit two people. Nice. Yeah. So. Because you're not fussy, you'll do everyone. I will literally murder anyone. Yeah. Um, who bothers me? <laughs> yeah. It's like you, you shut up. Okay. Cool. So there's our requisition. We've got one, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven. We get one more. So I'm also going to take this lucky charm, which allows me to one off ignore a single attack. Oh, cool. So we spend up to eight. Yep, so we spend eight now. Yep. And that means we are basically good to go. So let's read the text on the card. Cool. You ready, guys? I'll begin. Uh... <laughs> Locals have been reporting nighttime attacks by something weird. Ooh. Cow are being mutilated. People are going missing. <laughs> In short, you need to find out what's behind it and take it out. Arnie style. What's been going missing? Nice and simple. Cattle. A cattle are being mutilated and uh, people are going missing. I think it might have been the wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Proper wolf. <laughs> or maybe a bat swarm. <laughs> a bat swarm's carrying off the cattle, yeah. Yeah. What is the airspeed velocity of a laden bat swarm? I don't know. Well, we're here to find out. Please continue. <laughs> uh, what am I doing? Reading. Um, <laughs> take two cards from the encounter deck and shuffle them together with one purple T card. Deal one face down in each of the rooms on the map marked with an icon. Then deal out cards from the encounter deck face down into each of the remaining rooms except the starting room. Move this card into the play area with a... When a point of interest is placed on the board, flip this card. Discard this card if the confrontation begins. Cool. Did it say, was it move this card to the play area? Mm hmm. All right, well, let's do the instructions first. So give me the top two cards of the encounter deck there, buddy. There's my purple T card. Uh, this the encounter deck? Nope, that's the Doom deck. The this the encounter deck. The one with the encounter written on it. <laughs> <laughs> he was hoping for Chris or Ollie, but he ended up with me. <laughs> So I'm just going to give this a shuffle, and you point at a room where I'm going to put the first card. Okay. Next room. Uh, okay. That one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then uh, we can move that to the... Oh, then uh, this one was one more card in each of the remaining rooms. Okay. Are you fussy? No. The destiny of the cards has changed. There we go. Cool. <laughs> That goes back, and we're ready to move that to the play area and find out what's next. You ready, guys? <sighs> Flip this card if there are three or more infernos on the board at any rate. Oh, God's sake. You've picked the bloody... We would have fire the twist. <laughs> we would have the twist that triggers off of, of fire. fire with Liz Sherman. See? Welcome to this game. <laughs> That's why I brought a submachine gun. All right. Uh, so with that in mind, we're actually ready to start playing the game. Okay. So who's going to go first? So we need to stop. We need to find out what it is, take it out, nice and simple. Boom. Um, so, so we each have three actions, and we can spend them in any order we want. But we can do two free actions, which involve trading items, which we're not going to do right now. And the second free action we can do is I'm to explore. I'm sorry, buddy, I've forgotten the door. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, uh, it takes forever to get in this room. No, it doesn't. There's meant to be a door there. <laughs> God, Michael, you had one job. <laughs> one admin job. Hey, well, but before, uh, before we do anything else, why don't you use your deep pockets and explain what that does? Uh, so Hellboy has deep pockets here. Yes, we were discussing this before, weren't we? So this is my starting card as Hellboy. And um, what I can do is I can flip this card during the agent phase to draw from the bottom of the requisition deck um, until I find... This, uh, is that like a can of petrol, some bullets, or a folly clover? <laughs> I don't know what any of these items are. But um, then I can keep it and return any others to the deck. Mm -hmm. And then I flip it. Yep. And what's the on the other side? 
And then when I flip it... Do the exact same thing. Perfect. So I can get two more things. Yeah. So you might as well just discard that card and get two things now. Let's do it. Cool. So what we have to do is... Yeah, I know how to do it. Oh, okay. It's cool. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> there you go. Attention. Incendiary ammo. That's the first one we drew is bullets. Oh, okay. Cool. Then we've got gas mask. Can't have that. Then we've got uh, rocket pack. Can't have that. Then we've got cigarettes. There you go. What do cigarettes do? Uh, they allow us to be quiet in the rest phase at the cost of our health. Bye bye, deep pockets. Is that good? Uh, it may be useful. Incendiary ammo is good, except it creates fires. So I think we're going to trigger this twist case no matter what. Yes. Yep. So when you reload your gun, you can put the incendiary ammo in as a free action. When you, If you want to put it in before that, you can uh, just do it. The thing is... Once you've put it in, you flip the card over and it says, this weapon. The, this weapon causes fire to the target and adds one to the result of your shoot tests. Discard this card when your weapon runs out of ammo. Oh. So I'm going to take it off you because your weapon runs out of ammo I see every I single it. time you yeah. shoot it. So you'll now get one shot out of that, whereas I can put it in my submachine gun and get a lot more shots out of it. Yeah, the fire lady that, uh, should, should shoot fire. <laughs> so me taking it off him that's a trade action no you can only trade items with the little arrows on them um, but uh, it's free to do so now that we've sorted all of that out it's the agent phase by the way there is an enemy phase first but we skipped it because there's no enemies on the board cool. so now Michael the question is which corridor did we take um, north or west north because my favourite colour is green okay fine <laughs> so this room has a frog spawn and minion C in area 1 what's minion C uh, Minion C, dude, is... The Minion, harpy. Minion C is the harpy. There she is. <laughs> kind of... Sort of you. Harpy-esque. Mm. She's obviously sitting on a column because it's tiring to fly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe she's just coming out of that. All right. And then in space number four, we have Minion A. Which is the bat swarm. And a clue. And a clue. Now... The uh, the the Kickstarter made all the clue tokens these uh, plastic things in here. Just take out my chickens. So these are all just three D plastic clue tokens. Um, some of them are very very small, possibly meant to be glued to something else. I don't uh, know. Yeah. But uh, that's really tiny. Any of these are any of these are counting as a clue token. Um, but uh, I I find it's kind of just confusing and they're very grey. Well, there's so much grey plastic similar. on the board already. If you don't paint it all up, it's kind of hard to distinguish. So we decided that the clues would be these chickens because <laughs> they'll also be much easier to see on camera. <laughs> so these are the the the, the curious chi the clue chicks. Curious chickens. There's something odd about those chickens, and we need to find out what it is. Perfect. Brilliant. So there we go. All right, so Michael, what do these enemies actually do? The uh, the bat swarm is cowardly, so that means it will. Ah, so it runs away. Yeah, um, but it also uh, has territorial. This enemy replaces its cowardly tag with the brawler tag if there's an agent in the same room. It also is overwhelming. In the end phase, agents in the same area as one or more bat f swarms refresh one fewer action cube. That is sucks. bad. That sucks. Um, it's got six health, no resilience, four move, and five melee. Um, and what about this harpy? So she's got move X, resilience one, health four, melee six. Flit away. If there are no agents in this enemy's area when it is activated, move it to the in-play area. Move it to the in-play area. Swoop down. At the start of the enemy phase, each harpy in the in-play area is moved to the area of a random agent. Okay, so the in-play area is the room, in room. the game, but not on the board. Yep. Yeah. It's a new area that's just been defined by this card. <laughs> um, at the start of the enemy phase, it comes down and attacks an agent using target priority. Cool. Well, I hate not having enough action cubes, so here's my strategy. You walk into the first space and punch the harpy, <laughs> then um, I will move into that space afterwards and shoot the bat swarm. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, by punch, you mean just not use my pistol? Yes, I mean punch it with your hands. Ooh, or use your ancient blade. Well, you don't actually get to choose the ancient blade. Just... Oh yes, because my wrench weapon is rubbish. Well, it's the so Hellboy's but, got us. Ah, uh, but it's if I hit, I get five. Yeah, but uh, if you punch, you have all kinds of cool effects that can trigger off of that. Oh, cool! And also, you your punch is does way more damage. Yeah. So true. If you move in here, that's one action. Yes. Oh. And then if you punch the harpy, that's another action. Right, I'm gonna do that then, buddy. Cool. 
Now you get to upgrade one of those red dice to a black dice because of the ancient blade I gave you. Good job, y'all paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> How exciting! How exciting! Um, cool. All right, cool. If you can do five damage, you kill it. I can do this. I can do this. Uh, you did four. But I can reroll. You can reroll any number of these three dice. So I think you should reroll those two. Do you not think I should reroll that one? No, nah, two's pretty good. Okay. And I want five. Uh, you want to try it? Well, now you need three across those two. Yeah. I should be able to do this. Nope. You're actually <laughs> kidding. Left the harpy with one hit point. So what we've got are these little dice. The uh, the game actually gives you little red tokens. But uh, I was told by someone on Board Game Geek that they were terrible, and then I used them in practice, and they were. So we've got these now. So this is uh, three damage to the harpy. Maybe I should just try and punch it again. <laughs> Seems like a good idea. <laughs> Why don't you do that tomorrow on Ready Steady Play? So we'll be back for more harpy punching and fat burning. I can't believe that. That's tomorrow. so annoying. <laughs> Don't worry, there's plenty more to come. <laughs> Bye, everyone. See you tomorrow. Don't even get me started on these dice rolls.